the milling machine is designed to cut in basically three directions. It'll go up and down, um, whether the bed moves on the knee, or in this instance, because it's a mini mill, whether the whole head moves up out of the way, um, guided by some nice dovetails for accuracy. That's one direction. The other direction, your X and Y direction, as we've got displayed by this very old carpenter square. Um, the important thing about them is that they are straight, they are perpendicular to each other. The X axis moves in this direction perfectly straight. The Y axis will move at right angles to it perfectly straight. So it is critically important if we want to machine, say, a piece of nylon and produce a nice square finish, that the first thing we do is actually ensure our work holding devices, and so therefore our material, are true to those axes. And we're going to do that by a process known as clocking in, dialing in, setting up, you name it. But it's the most important starting point when you're going to use a milling machine. It's the first thing you must do every time you put a new work holding device on your machine. You need to dial it in and make sure it's running perfectly in line with your axis. So we're set up with a DTI. Um, here I've got mine clamped to the side of the actual milling head. I happen to have an extra feature that I've, I've made up to allow me to hold that, it's nice and easy. Um, we could use a magnetic base and we can stick it to the front of the machine. Um, in some instances you can actually even hold it in a chuck or in a collet um, so you can get the DTI into the position that you need it to be in order to take the measurement. Um, as long as you've got it set up nice and securely then it's easy enough to take um, precise measurements to see exactly how straight and true this particular piece of material is in comparison to the table. Okay, so the setup's fairly straightforward. Um, I want to try and get the plunger for my DTI as near to perpendicular to the material as is possible, so both in the up and down direction and in the forward and backwards direction, so it's nice and square on all round. I'm slightly off here, mostly because I've got quite a big clock here, just to give me the clearance so it doesn't clout the top of the vice as I go through. Um, certainly as long as you don't move it it should be accurate enough um, for the kind of work that we're doing but there can be errors bought in um, the further up the angle goes which could possibly give you a false reading. So next thing we're going to zero it out. First thing I like to do I'm just going to swing the x-axis backwards and forwards to make sure that I've got full engagement, the needle doesn't stop unexpectedly, which would tell me that perhaps it's reached the end of its travel. And I'm going to just wind it till it goes up to the zero. Notice actually we are nearly halfway along the travel of the DTI in this instance by the position of the small needle on the clock. So remember, I've thrown the vise on here, I haven't used any tenons, so it's free to move around basically. I've just put it on there by eye. I've nipped up the securing bolts but I haven't done them up tight. I need there to be enough movement to make any adjustments. Once we're in this position, let's get that back, cramped a little bit on zero. I'm then just going to wind the bed. Looks like it's miles out. We're taking notice of the direction that the needle is moving. I'm going to be using the little red numbers on here, which is the going backwards numbers if you like. It looks like that's quite a lot out. That's about the end of my travel. So, um, just over half a millimeter uh, discrepancy between this end and this end. So it really is quite badly fitted on. Now a little trick that we can use, if you want to know which way this is traveling, whether it's whether it's pushed over in this direction or if it's pushed in this direction, is to just go in and tweak the plunger. Now you notice if I push the plunger in towards the clock, it travels in a clockwise direction. Our needle went in an anti-clockwise direction, which tells me that the plunger was going out as it travel along, suggesting that this needs to come back in in this direction. So we need to make a little minor adjustment and it always seems a little bit extreme but 
I'm rather beaten and battered brass hammer. In your case, it'll be a dead blow hammer. And we're just going to use really light taps um, just to just to tweak the position of the vice over um, in order to get that nearer to zero. Now, my preferential way of doing this is every time you take a reading and you make an adjustment, always half the error that you've got. So here we've got, well, let's say we've got half a mil. We've, we've got 50 on the clock. So I'm going to be looking at bringing the needle back up to about the 25 position. Um, doesn't matter if you do this wrong. If you hit it from the wrong side and it starts to move in that direction, nothing's changed. Just hit back from the other side until you get it to where you were hoping it would be. And we've got quite a lot to get out here. Seems to be... Near enough. But at this point we don't need to be too worried about accuracy. Now I'm just going to bring the needle back to zero so it makes it nice and easy to keep track of where we are. And now we're going to measure from this to the back end over the same distance and see whatever we get. So it's moving. We've still got an error. We haven't got as much of an error. Point one five, mm, nearly point two. So we've already we've pretty much half the error as it is. So I'm going to do exactly the same. So here we're at the um, point two position, and I'm going to go to the middle of that to the point one, or in your case, probably easy to see the ninety. And we can just tap and see which way it goes. Try it in the right way. And then we'll zero it again, but what we'll do, make it nice and easy for you. So we can bring that up. I'll just wind the bed into zero. You wouldn't have to do that, it just makes it easier to see on the camera. And now we wind it the other way. A little bit of a deviation there, I've not got the best parallel in the world, it's true to say. And 0 0.04, no point zero 0.03 in fact. So virtually for the majority of jobs pretty much there. Um, again we can just half that. Somewhere about there. Uh, you could go on forever trying to get this as accurate as possible. So we've halved it three times. It's taken five minutes and we know the parallel is a bit dodgy there because we spotted that earlier. You got a little bit of deflection. There's a dodgy bit of the parallel. Yeah, it still wants a little bit of tweaking. We can keep going backwards and forwards half in the half in the error. And it depends upon the accuracy of the job that you're looking to do. But to be fair, for most of the basic work, here we are, that's not too shabby. You don't even need to zero it, that's the thing. You don't need to zero it, all you're doing is watching for the needle to move. It helps to zero it so you can keep track of by how far out it is, how much you need to, to tap it in order to adjust it. But as you can see, under five minutes can very rapidly get that to the point where we're not getting any movement on the needle at all and we can say that this face is now true what that means is if we now come in with a cutter here and we'll introduce the cutter for realism we could now come in with our cutter here we could cut all the way along here we could stop we could come along this way and we would get a perfect 90 degree angle on the corner um, without any need for any further setup because we know the vice is now trued 
to the head of the mill and ready to go. The only last thing you need to do, and it's important that you remember this, is to then go in with a spanner and then tweak all of the, the securing bolts whilst watching the needle. So don't take this off until you've tied it up. It is possible, particularly if you haven't cleaned underneath the vise, if there's something underneath it and you do it up and you start to crush it, it will cause it to move and you'll see the needle will start to deviate a little bit and then you know you've got to do the whole thing again. But as long as everything is clean, don't do them up tightly. I like to just introduce a little bit of torque onto them very, very slowly and do that one a little bit, do that one a little bit, do that one a little, that one a little bit until you're happy that it's tight. Once you've done that, the gauge can come off, you can put the cutter in and you're ready to go because that is your vice dialed in, clocked in, set, ready to go.